Hello and welcome to a very special edition, a so-called Valentine's edition for energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Janak. Now, love is the highest energy we can create. It's also the highest energy in the universe. And normally we look at what is called the overall energy and then go into the star signs. But because we're looking specifically for what's going on emotionally and energetically at Valentine's, I thought we'd do this slightly different. Um, every star sign is born within an element. So we have the element of air, water, fire and earth. And these elements in many ways are like imprints. They're like traits. They're things that you come here with regardless of how your life turns out. And then, because we are all, you know, the star signs run along the, the Milky Way, the planet, so to speak, every star sign is also governed by either one or two planets. And these planets have an effect on our energy. And you know that this is true because <clears throat> as the um, the saying, not, it's not a saying, but, you know, um, everybody's aware when Mercury is in retrograde and everybody goes like, oh, right? Communication is so difficult and it's true. And obviously Valentine's Day is on the 14th of February. And um, interestingly enough, until the 21st of February, Mercury is in retrograde. So <laughs> don't worry about it. It's all going to be easier um, when we actually go there. So, we, like I said, we separate this by, by elements and in each of the four elements are three star signs. So we're getting through the 12 star signs this way by looking at the element and what it denotes, what it says first, before we go into the individual star sign. And once we're in the star sign, there will be an overall energy or an energy that is there for your dealings around your emotions, um, around uh, um, Valentine's. My feeling is that maybe the guides will make me separate female and male energy, but I don't know that yet. It's just a feeling that I'm getting. Should this happen, it will certainly not happen for each and every star sign. But we take it as it comes. Here we go. Let's look at the very first star sign. Uh, sorry, the very first element and the star sign within, which is the air signs. Those born under the element of air are Aquarius, Gemini and Libra. Now, as an air sign, what is really important is, in a way, freedom of thought, freedom of expression, um, being allowed to feel everything you feel, be, being not laughed at when you express yourself. <clears throat> and at the same time, air signs have problems, oftentimes, really expressing themselves and that's just one of those things which are I always believe are imprints <clears throat> that people come here with and then obviously the ruling planet of your star sign has a thing or two to do with the energy that you carry around and then the rest is basically you know life experience bloodline the family you were born into the experience you have all these kind of things so let's go into the um Air signs. Let's not make this much more complicated here, because otherwise it doesn't. It's not fun, is it? When it all takes too long and shit. So, <clears throat> what is important about um, Aquarius? First star sign, Aquarius. You are the water bearer. You are the person whose energy can easily renew and, in a way, heal others. So you, by default, will be a person that people will always seek 
um, especially when there is low energy or when they have trouble. So you are also a person who allows yourself to sometimes be taken for a ride simply because you know you always give all you got and that doesn't always help. So with regards to love, what we have is cracked open. What that means is, it basically says here, energetically speaking, whether or not you are in a relationship or not, what happens in your energy at the at this point in time, and also then therefore on Valentine's Day, is that instead of thinking back about all the things that have happened, allow yourself to just surrender to life and remember that your imprints don't make you you may come with this um f with this energy of of yes this is a person i can talk to and sometimes people are not bad people they become opportunists if that makes sense and you possibly probably have to learn to say no right um and aquarians can suffer from a, a chronic um I don't know how to say no thing. <laughs> so all the things with regards to Valentine's Day, trust your intuition, allow yourself the, the feeling of I enjoy life with all the things that are there and we have a little bit more here. Because what the guides are saying to you as well is in order to enjoy yourself and enjoy love that you are or could potentially attract if you're not in a relationship um, then certainly this is the time where you can manifest it if you are in a relationship it doesn't really matter because it, it applies either way all the guides are saying is in order for you to enjoy love you have to or you ought to because you have free will so when i say or when the guides say you have to it's not a must you decide you are the blacksmith of your fortunes, if that makes sense. All the guides are saying to you is, you need to slow down. It is the thoughts, the racing of the thoughts, who take away the feeling of, I want to be in the moment, I want to be loved, and I want to love with, with passion and, and, and everything I've got. And I want to feel <coughs> how it feels to be loved. Right? Short and sweet, there's not much more to it. The other thing I'm getting for, for Aquarians, Aquarians is to spend a bit more time in nature. But it is your racing, your racing thoughts that can mess up the, the part of your relationship where you feel this is where we could get closer. This is where we could become one okay that was aquarius under the element of air uh, now going into gemini now gemini you are your star sign that is is um governed by mercury right. <clears throat> and here's an important thing about mercury i know mercury is responsible for a lot of things like technology failing and um, communication not being easy but since your star sign is governed by Mercury, and Mercury can be in retrograde, and Mercury, see, communication, and Mercury can be in retrograde numerous times a year, you are getting used uh, to, you're getting used to feeling a bit out of sorts. So that's a very normal thing for Gemini to feel a bit, uh, not sure what's going on here. And what the guides are saying is because this feeling out of sync, almost, is in your DNA. And it doesn't have to be a problem once you realize, okay, I, and it doesn't mean that you're moody, it just feels like, you know, you, you, sometimes you don't know when, when things are good, you sort of assume, or oh, they might not stay good, right? So also watch how your brain works with regards to love, if that makes sense. Here's a couple of things. You have what is called the Horus, Horus energy 
around you, which is protection and loyalty and trust and safety. In other words, what the guides are saying to you right now, let it all go. Trust, allow yourself to be you. And also, first and foremost for Gemini, I think that's the main message here really, is to realize that you are not easily fooled. You know when things are not working. You know when when you're not in the right place. And you would also certainly know when the relationship you're in or about to embark upon isn't working. So use your intuition, but first and foremost, trust it. Okay? So, Gemini, going to the last air sign, which is uh, Libra, which is governed by Venus. So, people always say that because there's all these, these songs about Venus, you know. Um, just because you're governed by Venus, that doesn't mean that your life is hot and steamy all the time, you, uh, you know. So, that's just one of those myths, if that makes sense, that, that you have to be um, always hyper active and everything, hypersexual even, you know, this is actually not really a Libra trait. What, what it means is that um, once you go with the flow, which is not that often Librans, you, um, you, you give 100%, you may, e may even give 150%. Now with regards to, to being loved and loving someone, that's actually not a bad thing. What you have is you have the, uh, uh, um, the Mars energy with you and the uh, crystal grid next to it. What it means is that there, in order for you to be able to properly experience love, you have to always remember that if you hold on to memories regarding relationships you were in, and hold on to the negatives. In other words, very likely for uh, Libras, Librans, there, there might be a bit of trauma inside you. And all the guides are saying is in order for you to realize when things are working, you need to and ought to let go of um, the internal conflict that you have. You know, in other words, you cannot be too laid back and just say, well, let's see what happens next before I commit. It doesn't work that way for Librans. Um, you, you either go there or you don't. Right? And all the guides are saying is what stops you and sometimes your love life from really blossoming, 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 yeah, <laughs> might be the feeling that there is still unfinished business inside you, that there's still pain. Um, I wouldn't go as far as saying that, that there is real damage, if that makes sense. That might be the case for some of you, but certainly it is easy enough uh, for Librans to walk around hurt, you know, because you're very, you're very um, soft and very sensitive. So anything that doesn't work, you will not let go within a day, if that makes sense, right? And because you have the crystal grid, which means transmission in a way, um, now is the time for Valentine's to send out the feelings and the manifestation to the universe that, that, that things will actually work out fine for you. The good thing about the energy that I'm having here for Libras, Librans, with regards to... Um, Valentine's Day is, there's nothing negative here. And all the guides are saying, it's just like they said before the Gemini, um, if you feel your partner, and if you feel where you are going, that's all you need to do in order to stay protected, because that's the energy as well. Um, you know, Mars energy can be quite... Um, in your face, but it is trying to protect you from stuff, which is why the energy of Mars, uh, uh, which is not your, your your ruling planet, so to speak, but um, Mars as a planet, and we will cover this later in another star sign that is actually governed by Mars. Mars really is all about your energy levels anyway. So uh, if if 
Mars energy is there. It's about, okay, how do you actually feel? Um, how invested are you in things with regards to love? And all the guides are showing you because you have the crystal grid, um, which is sort of a light body. Um, and what they're saying is, maybe it's time for you to ease up a little and just say like, okay, I'm ready for something that is really awesome. So if you are in a relationship that is loving, give thanks to the universe. And also remember to sort of go like, okay, this is working. And instead of just looking at the things that aren't really working and only do that, it would be good to also acknowledge all the things that are working. Okay? That was Librans. That were all the earth air signs, if that makes sense. And now we're going from uh, the air signs into the earth signs. This is Energy and Star Sign Readings with myself, Thomas Janak. This is a Valentine's special. Now looking at the Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, the thing, as you already know, Earth is about being grounded, also is about building things from the ground up. So the energy of your element are, in a way, telling you that once you are upset, once you're not quite grounded, you lose your balance. And so it is important for you to at all times know what you're doing. It sounds a bit wrong when you say be in charge, because that's really not what this is about. But being grounded means that, you know, you, you know who you are. And therefore, not all that much can um, happen to you. We already spoke about Venus um, uh, and when we looked at Libra. Um, and now Venus is also the planet that governs Taurus. And one of the things about the very fact that Venus is the planet that governs your star sign. Okay, they're called rulers, ruling planets. I never like the sound of being ruled. Remember, astrology is really, really old. And um, people looked at things differently then, kind of thing. And um, I always feel that what the planets really do is governing us because the universe is always interested in you experiencing everything there is to experience without the least harm, if that makes sense. So you're not ruled, you're just governed, which is also why you have, uh, why we all have free will. Long story short, for Taurus, because Venus is that planet of, you know, I'm your Venus, I'm your fire, yeah, you know, of love. Uh, which I said earlier, so, sort of uh, hot and steamy love is not really what they're talking about. <clears throat> but Taurians put a lot of emphasis just by being Taurians on the home, family, and on pleasing the relationship you're in. And there's almost a need to know that you're loved, which can turn, which which can cause um, jealousy, which can cause mistrust. So the trick would be for Taurians, it sounds a bit weird, um, to to learn to express your true feelings, because Taurians, and you know that if you are Taurian, you're not always the best at at um, at speaking your truth, because sometimes there's this sort of angry uh, um, force that Taurians, hence the bull, <laughs> display, and then you just go, right? But that's not communication, that's just, that's just ranting, that's just releasing stale energy and stuff. But if you are in a relationship, Taurians, doesn't matter if you're male or female here, they're not separating this at all. The trick to make things work is to learn to say how you feel and demand, if that makes sense, demand from your partner um, to be taken seriously. Because what you have here is forge, don't follow, which is very much Torian anyway, right? You know, 
bull in the china shop you just go and so this is not so much about walking a path that has has a contract to it if that makes sense even though it's also part of Toreans wanting to know where we where, where you are being <clears throat> in something that you can understand rather than just winging it um but your your message for for um valentines is to don't necessarily follow in in a way be the leader you wish you've had ha you've had when your teachings came along when, when when you know so in other words in the relationship because you also have this tendency to please your partner so they're not saying you know just please your partner and the world will be good in fact what they're saying to you is when they say forge don't follow highlight what it is you enjoy because this is about enjoyment uh, enjoy uh, within a relationship and it's much more than sexual because you know the moment you know there's venus involved that's all uh, a lot of people here oh venus right um and this is not what this is about but it is also about physical pleasure right because as long as there is consent um it should be enjoyable and you have that right to enjoy it like anybody has and it feels to me that sometimes Toreans um don't express your true wishes if that makes sense so so which is a trust thing right and all the guides are saying is within your relationship male or female doesn't matter be yourself at all times and the moment something isn't quite right right express it see what the how the partner reacts to it see if you can just look at, at at things that the partner maybe even hasn't understood before hasn't looked at and this goes vice versa so communication is a big thing for Toreans and that's all they have for your for your valentine's love life <clears throat> going into Virgos again another planet that is uh, governed by by Mercury <laughs> if that makes sense <clears throat> here we go for Virgos this set this this Valentine's I don't know why, why I was why I was trying to say this September right so they're not giving me more so whatever that means I haven't got a bloody notion <clears throat> Here's the message for, for Virgos with regards to your um, Valentine's energy, if that makes sense. <clears throat> if you felt alone, if you felt unfulfilled, then now is the time to step back from it all and get a bit of perspective about what's going on here, what was I committing to, and what is going on. Similarly, should you be single <clears throat> this is about saying getting perspective again this is about reflection and reflecting looking at things that have happened in the past without judging them you understand what i'm trying to say what that means is for virgos is if you have been going if you if you went through a couple of really difficult things and for as long as they stay inside you the universe will send you the same type of energy until you learn it and if you realize that there, there, there were things that really didn't go well and that maybe even hurt you or even damaged you, caused you trauma, once you realize that you're not that person anymore, you manifest differently. And that's another thing for, for Virgos is to realize, especially because you are governed by a planet that um, feels out of sync a lot. Um, for Virgos, therefore, it's important just to realize, okay, I look at everything that happened before and it is all about, at this point in time, it's, it's not so much about communication, but this is really about for Valentine's, because that's what we're ultimately talking about, <clears throat> is a physical connection. This is, this is really about how do I feel when there's a physical connection 
And a physical connection is much deeper than just love. And it's much deeper than just sex. Because in a way, a hug can be can mean more to people than sex. And by no means am I trying to 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 limit the feeling of sex because you know sex is fucking awesome. I'm not knocking it. But in the case of Virgos, it is really important for you to realize that it is sometimes because you, you might not always be um comfortable with being touched or touch you can isolate yourself energetically speaking and all the guides are saying is observe that and figure out what it is that isn't working and just like we had with taurus earlier <clears throat> communication is the key now <clears throat> i have to say this the guides are quite serious about these things so this is not one of those readings where they say like, oh yeah, buy a bunch, buy a bunch of flowers and, and, and chocolates and enjoy the night. Because that goes without saying, right? You create the magic. If the magic happens, you are part of it. You need to want it. You can also instigate it. That's all stuff that the universe isn't even concerned with. What they're telling you is to go deeper and to realize that Physical connection is not unimportant for Virgos. And that's why they're saying to you is, is this something that you really enjoy? And if so, um, is that something that your partner shares with you? And if not, where is the problem or where, where do the problems lie? Okay, that was Virgos going into the last Earth element star sign, which is Capricorn. go again this seems to be a theme for earth signs <clears throat> so not just for capricorns but the main message here is within a relationship to express yourself at all times make sure you're comfortable with expressing yourself because in, in order for you to create new things to create a life worth living, you need to state it. Really, really important. With regards to Valentine's, obviously seems to be just, it is, love is highlighted on that day. It might not be all that deep, if that makes sense, because, you know, it's easy to buy someone flowers and chocolate and hope you have a good check, right? No offense, but you understand that this is, this is what happens across the globe on Valentine's, right? You go to a restaurant before we were in bloody lockdown, right? And um, you, you, you eat something nice, you create a scenario. It's all about, wow, we love each other. And I'm not trying to, to minimize this, but because we're talking about love, it goes much deeper than just the one day. It's just because it is Valentine's Day, it is important to highlight this. And this is what this reading is sort of trying to do, if that makes sense. So Capricorns, in your relationships, in any relationship that you have where there's deep emotional, intimate love involved, your job is to grow and your job is to educate the other party and be educated by the other party about the meaning of love, if that makes sense. Sounds a bit out there because if you ask anybody, it doesn't matter how many years they study a certain field, you know, um, everybody knows when they're in love. Try to explain it to someone. Good luck. Right? But that's what the guides are basically saying to you. Um, you get your life lessons that you really ought to learn or pass on to someone, you get them all within the area and the areas of intimate relationships. Okie dokie, that was that. That was the earth signs going into water signs. Water signs. Water signs, the, 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 the star signs within the water signs are Pisces, 
Cancer and Scorpio. And the imprint for water signs, and I am a water sign being a Pisces myself, is really that water signs feel everything super deep. And sometimes depending on where you were born is in your star sign. And that's the idea, you know, your star sign goes about, uh, let's say, um, goes for months, okay? And if you are born halfway through, your biggest issue is not that you feel everything deeper, but maybe that you find it hard to express yourself. So, there, so all I'm trying to say is when we talk about the water signs, <clears throat> it is not something that is written in stone and that's the way it is. <laughs> What I'm saying is that the, that the, the star signs, the, the water signs that are born in the latter half of the months tend to also have the problem to not being able to express themselves fully. And what I'm getting as well for Pisces, Cancerians and Scorpio, one of the best ways of expressing oneself is actually through art. Right? So energetically speaking for water signs, um, you know, musician, musicianship, acting, even stand-up comedy, everything that you can do to express and, um, and express yourself kind of thing um, through playing a role without being fake. That's another thing that I get for, for, for us water signs is really, really not a bad thing. Okay, going into Pisces, Pisceans. The planets that rule um, the star sign of Pisces are Jupiter and Neptune. Neptune. Interesting, because Jupiter is all about luck, you know. And so when you have when you're in Jupiter, uh, even though there's much more to it, but we just don't have the time. It would be pointless to, to make a, a a reading just about the depths of a planet, you know. <clears throat> so because we we're, we're governed by Jupiter, and Jupiter is all about luck and, f and what that means it's good luck you know um um it's like saying like yes i um i attract good luck and i i attract good things that feel random because that's what luck does you know luck feels random uh luck it's like wow that was lucky and <clears throat> can feel as if it was coincidence and the one thing we know everybody who has ever been spiritual learns that quite quite early on, that there's no coincidence. And if you believe in coincidence, then Carl Gustav Jung um, always said that uh, coincidences are meaningful coincidences because you stop and give the meaning, right? So they're no longer coincidences, if that makes sense. Point is, Jupiter is all about good luck and feeling like, wow, wasn't expecting this. And Neptune, the other planet that rules our star sign, Pisces, <clears throat> it moves so slowly that sometimes we're waiting for things to happen. And sometimes when things are finally happening for us, like love, which is what we're talking about, if you feel like, wow, this is great, we're hoping for some sort of wow thing. And I'm not saying it never happens, but because the governing planet Neptune, one of the two governing planets of Pisces, is a very slow moving planet, massively <laughs> slow moving planet. We sometimes miss that feeling of, wow, that was a perfect night. That was a perfect moment, if that makes sense. And sometimes we, 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 we want to have perfect moments. And here's what that means for us Pisceans. Um, and, I, and I'm getting this because I'm Piscean without ever actually getting a card, even though they, they just gave me one now. As Pisceans, the, the water sign that has to do with creation of art, music, um, acting. In other words, you, us, we, you set the tone. You create the energy you wish to experience. Don't leave it up to others because here's what the guys have for us. With regards to love, all we need to say to our partners is 
fall into my arms, right? Unconditionally, fall into my arms and we take it from there, right? That was there for Pisces, going into Cancerians. Now, for Cancerians, it is quite interesting because the, the, um, the planet that rules you, governs you, is the moon. Okay, the moon, the sun and the moon, uh, and the sun is obviously the most important in the in the um, astrological chart, if that makes sense, <clears throat> because that's where you get your star sign slash your, your sun sign. Um, the moon is all about showing your emotions. That's what this video is about, because the moon, as you know, rules the night. So, you know, the, 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 the moon, obviously we have the sun that rules the day and the moon that rules the night. So, Cancerians, you are on a spinning planet and every time you are awake or even when you're asleep, every time you breathe, so to speak, you have a supporting energy around you, be it the sun or the moon. And I don't care if you if you know about astronomy and think like, hang on a second, the moon and the sun, they're just luminaries, right? <clears throat> In astrology, they have always been looked at as planets, right? So it makes no difference uh, what they are to people, you know, just because Pluto, Pluto, for instance, has been uh, <laughs> demoted to a planetoid doesn't make him any, any less powerful. And because your ruling planet is the moon, you sometimes feel something is missing. And here is why, in Native American shamanism, or in Native American lore, <clears throat> the moon is called the grandmother. What happened is, and this is just um, history, a long, long time ago, a planetoid called Thea hit Earth with full force, because that's what planets do, and sheared off about a third of the planet, and then started spinning, blah, 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 you know, took for bloody ever, obviously we're talking years and years and years and years and years, and it formed the moon. So the moon is basically us, it's basically Earth, and it is in our orbit, if that makes sense, and so this is why we're all moonstruck, if that makes sense. We have a very special feeling uh, about the moon, which is also when, when um, scientists get up to the moon and they bring stones down, <clears throat> they always notice, oh, it's, it's, it's like the stones on Earth. <laughs> what that means is the, the, the grandmother, as the Native Americans call the moon, <clears throat> is basically <clears throat> someone who watches over her children and grandchildren but can never quite be there. And for Cancerians, what happens a lot with regards to love, because we're talking about the highest energy we can create and this feeling of, I want to belong to someone and I want to be with someone and, and I want it to feel, wow, it's just us. And it's not just us against the world, it's just us. Partly this because of what happened <clears throat> and how the moon was formed that you have that feeling of not being whole. And here's the message that the guides just gave me uh, for Cancerians. What do you want for you to do with regards to your love life right now, this moment, is to look at everything including the relationship you're in or the relationship you are manifesting, is to say, I'm sorry, and to right some wrongs, right? Reflect on what are my darker sides? Remember the moon, the night? What are my darker sides? What have I caused that was painful to others? Just so, once you realize it and reflect on it, um, just so it won't happen in the next relationship. Right? So that's what the guys want you to do as well in this relationship that you're in, for instance. If there's anything you're sorry for, and it doesn't matter um, if it is rightly so, 
or if you just feel that way, should you feel sorry for anything that has happened in that time? On Valentine's day and night <clears throat> and evening, when you open up your heart and your partner does the same, it is much easier than to say, by the way, right, because now you can feel the love and share the love, I'm really sorry about what happened then. It's much easier to forgive when when the apology uh, uh, comes at the moment where where love is heightened. Okay, that's what we have for Cancerians. Going into the final star sign for the water signs, which is Scorpio. So, I just talked about Pluto because um, Scorpios are um, governed by uh, by Mars and Pluto, and like I said, Mars earlier is all about. Um, Energy levels, right? So it's like, Whoa. so that's the first thing I'm saying to you. Um, if you want to express yourself inside a relationship, don't be low energy. The moment you go like, oh, right? It it is not that it is not valid when you feel under the weather, but things cannot easily be changed or resolved when the energy is not in the mode of, 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 of knowing, yeah, I can do this, right? if that makes sense. <clears throat> so, for um, because Pluto is one of the, 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 the two planets that, that rule and govern Scorpio, Pluto is all about transformation, it's all about inevitable changes, and you're going through changes, especially inside your relationships the message for scorpios is to question everything that happened up until now and look at your relationship and anything unaligned must go in other words you look at your relationship and you lift the veil and you go like this is me in my entirely entire entirety this is me in my purest form and I want to see you in that purest form and align right so I think communication here is what what the guys refer to the most with regards to Scorpio is to look at your relationships and sorry, your and your relationship especially with, with regards to partners and um question everything that happened happens there it feels like once you're in a relationship you know you, you you sort of make it work and sometimes it becomes a bit stale but it's like oh yeah we're getting there and yeah i know this happened a couple of months ago a couple of years ago but um we're here now right and that's all good but it's only all good once you actually go to looking at making changes so that anything that isn't aligned can fit right that's all they have for Scorpio <clears throat> going into the final um, element, which are fire signs. Fire signs. The, the, the signs, star signs in the element of fire are Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. And everything about fire is about renewal. Is about, yeah, <coughs> sounds a bit cliche, building new stuff, coming back from the ashes, if that makes sense. In other words, it's not about building bridges. Energetically speaking, it's about realizing that anything that sits inside you that doesn't allow you to move on causes damage, right? Let's go into the first star sign here, which is Aries. For Aries, you are... Um, governed by the same planet that Scorpio was 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 uh, um, governed, which is Mars. <laughs> right? So again, this is all about um, energy levels. But in many ways, Mars is also about being full of passion. Um, show your show your passion, and this is about Valentine. So show your passion um, in the relationship. Allow yourself to be fire allow yourself to be wow right in a relationship um without apologizing if that makes sense um 
because the message that I got for Aries from the guides is is about allowing your intuition to take over, but have an inner authority while you are fire, while you say like, I am showing you how deeply I can love and I'm choosing you to love so deeply, right? There's still an inner authority, which means while I allow you to be part of this experience, there are still rules, there are still things where you have to treat me or you ought to treat me in a certain way, right? Respect is a really big thing for uh, for Aries as well. Because what the guides are saying here is um, to, to in your relationship, while the relationship is now about Valentine's, yes, I'm going to um, show my passion, right? If that makes sense. Um, the most important thing around Valentine's for Aries is actually to look within which is the inner authority as well. Look within. While it is perfectly fine, for, in a way, for that one evening here, um, to go all out, right? And be maybe even surprising um, to, to your partner. Um, the important thing is to look within and realize, and that sounds a bit weird, all paths lead home. And home is you. In a relationship, even though you are the person that, that ought to show passion, to show the other person, I want to love deeply. I'm not afraid to show it, right? If that makes sense. So um, being outgoing, again, is not always an easy thing for Aries, um, necessarily, <laughs> even though I know a few Aries who are louder than I am. <laughs> but they, seems to be, they seem to be um, quite rare still. Ultimately, this is about how you feel. And while you are showing your passion, while you open yourself, yourself up, it will give your partner the understanding of, wow, this is how much this person, or you in a sense, wants to be with me. And this is not, again, I have to stress this, this is not just about physical things here. This is not about sex when we talk about passion this is not just about sex because that's always the conclusion a lot of people do because we have all these you know movies and and stuff and then we have people who are um, just thinking well if i get her flowers and chocolate you know we might do something tonight this goes way deeper we're talking about love the highest energy that can be created and in order to create it and make it stay for Aries, it is important while you're showing your passion, your love. And it's also passion for, for projects you're in. So if you had to have talked to your partner about, yeah, let's fix the, fix the bloody uh, uh, um, garage tomorrow. You know, let's move. This is also all about passion. Show your passion, show your passions in the relationship, but make it all about how you truly feel because then your partner knows what's what and can decide whether or not they want to share in that experience, right? That was Aries. Going into Leo. They give me cards straight away. <laughs> and uh, Leos are actually um, governed by the sun, right? And the sun is all about personality. It's also about ego. Um, but the, the sun is all about personality and it's also about um, desires. It's like, you know, I, I, I came here to do what I want. All star signs <clears throat> were named by the Greek and a lot of that stuff is, is mythology, right? So Leo was called after a lion that some god killed, if that makes sense. So we're not talking about the energy of the lion um, being around Leos, if that makes sense, right? So even though it can be seen, seen that way because the energy of the lion has been attributed to you, therefore some rawness, some lion energy is around you. Um, the one thing that is difficult for Leos being associated 
with lions themselves is that because you're you're all about personality and about desires right you can be slightly especially in a relationship because that's what we're talking about here um unruly right and yet when you look at lions of all the cats that are out there they're really sociable and social animals if that makes sense and sometimes leos are, are not so uh, this is what the energy is uh, is saying about you right now in relationships what they're saying for leos what is happening or should be happening right now in your relationship relationships is um is to be on the same page right so what comes to mind i don't know i'm a big star trek fan and they sometimes do these mind melts you know the vulcans and then they go my mind to your mind my thoughts to your thoughts <laughs> and that's in a way what what the guides give me it's sort of my will to thy will you know my will to your will so it is expressing in a relationship um the things you have in common and 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 letting your partner know how you truly feel and asking them truly are you with me on that that's that's really important because when a leo relationship works so let's step away from from uh, the fire sign as such and from the um the the ruling governing planet leos themselves when love is really happening that's when deep healing is happening for leos this is where you heal your hurt this is where you heal any damage that sits there it is through love not with a group but with an individual that loves you the way you are and that you love the way he or she is right and that's what they're asking you to look at um in in your valentines if you're single and you're manifesting which is obviously what the guides um <clears throat> really hope you're doing is to say i deserve someone who loves me the way i am and i pledge to love them the way they are because having lion energy which means dominance in many ways um you could easily attempt to change people and that's not your job right that was leo going into the last star sign of the fire signs and also going to the very last star sign of this reading which was really long <laughs> if that makes sense but um there isn't much we can do um going into sagittarius we already talked about the planet of jupiter uh, with pisces being the planet that says you know um a bit of good luck is sometimes what you need a bit of good luck is what we what we, what we sent you right and for sagittarians it is important to realize that when you are in love when you are committed to a, a relationship you invest all your energy into that relationship if you don't it's not really working when you truly feel it you will invest all your energy in that one person and <clears throat> sometimes people give 100% back but their 100% feels like you're 50% because by default you give more right so it's difficult for Sagittarians to find someone who are in a way as deep as you and sometimes Sagittarians have a problem hmm, figuring out or allowing others to do things differently to how you would do them right so in a relationship what they're saying is um don't be afraid inside your relationship to be in a codependency allow yourself to make this about yes i care for you you care for me i carry you you carry me without any false feelings of oh my god you know you do so much more in a relationship than i do and all that kind of stuff all the guides are saying is if the love is real and you invest all your energy then you give everything and the other party partner should do the same that's all i got in a way it was interesting i was expecting the guides to change 
um, from male to female, which is normally what you do and what happens when you look at at Valentine's energy. But um, they were sort of really serious about this tonight, I have to say. And I think the reason why this happens, at least how the guides made me feel, is because we are born under elements and we are born within elements of air, fire, earth, water. And these imprints is what we walk around with and what we have. And it, it is, hence the planets and stuff, what governs us. And so acknowledging them while you live your life and while certainly life experiences sometimes mean that whatever you came here with can't even be achieved, right? So it's a different topic. Um, what the guides are saying is, for to all star signs is, look at your love life. Because that is the most important thing in all our lives. If we're not loved, and if we can't love, something massive is missing. Right? So, that was a special edition. Please don't forget to share this. And please subscribe to the channel. Really, really important. Please subscribe. Um, we have had, uh, um, you know... 45 hours of messages from the guides uh, um, so far, even more now. Um, please subscribe um, and share the videos widely. Thank you all so much. Have a lovely Valentine's.